morning children a very good morning to all welcome to our english class children today i want to say a new i mean i want to say a nice thought use your time wisely that means don't waste your time use your time properly and utilize the time properly right so now coming to our class already in our previous class we finished our explanation part of lesson Five that is Dorothy's adventure. So today, what next? Yes, yes. Your guess is right. And today, you're going to learn, or you're going to watch your animated video. Enjoy your animated video. Along with the video, today I'm sending new words and meanings right in your class workbook very neatly. Is it okay, children? Yes. Now enjoy your video. Here is your animated video. After a few hours, the road became rough and the walking grew difficult. The scarecrow often stumbled over the bricks that were very uneven. Sometimes they were broken or missing altogether, leaving holes. Toto jumped across them, and Dorothy walked around them. As the scarecrow had no brains, he walked straight ahead and stepped into the holes and fell hard. It never hurt him. And Dorothy picked him up and set him upon his feet again. At noon, they sat down by the roadside near a little brook, and Dorothy opened her basket and got out some bread. She offered a piece to the scarecrow, but he refused. I am never hungry, he said. And it is a lucky thing. My mouth is only painted, and if I cut a hole in it to eat, the straw I am stuffed with will come out. That will spoil the shape of my head. Dorothy saw that this was true, so she nodded and went on eating her bread. When she had finished her lunch, the scarecrow said, "Tell me something about yourself and the country you come from." So she told him all about Kansas and how a cyclone had carried her to the strange land of Oz. The scarecrow listened carefully and said. I cannot understand why you should wish to leave this beautiful country and go back to the place you call Kansas. That is because you have no brains," answered the girl. "No place can ever be as beautiful as home. Kansas is my home." The scarecrow sighed. By evening, they came to a great forest where the trees grew so big and close together. That their branches met over the road. It was almost dark under the trees, for the branches shut out the daylight. The travelers did not stop and went on into the forest. If this road goes in, it must come out," said the scarecrow. "And as the Emerald City is at the other end of the road, we must go wherever it takes us." After an hour or so, the light faded away, and they found themselves stumbling along in the darkness. Dorothy could not see at all, but Toto could, because some dogs see very well in the dark. The scarecrow said that he could see as well in the dark as by day. So Dorothy took hold of his arm and managed to walk along fairly well. After a while, the scarecrow stopped. I see a little cottage. He said, "Built of logs and branches. Shall we go there?" "Yes, indeed," answered the girl. "I am very tired." So the scarecrow led her through the trees until they reached the cottage. Dorothy entered and found a bed of dried leaves in one corner. She lay down at once, and with Toto beside her, soon fell into a sound sleep. The scarecrow, who was never tired, Stood up in another corner and waited patiently until morning came. When Dorothy awoke, the sun was shining through the trees, and Toto had long been out chasing birds and squirrels. The scarecrow was still standing in his corner, waiting for her. We must go and search for water, she said to him. They left the cottage and walked through the trees until they found a little spring of clear water. Where Dorothy drank and bathed and ate her breakfast, she saw 
there was not much bread left in the basket and the girl was thankful that the scarecrow did not have to eat anything for there was scarcely enough for herself and toto for the day when she had finished her meal and they were all about to go back to the road she was startled to hear a deep groan nearby what was that she asked fearfully i don't know replied the scarecrow but we can go and see just then another groan reached their ears and the sound seemed to come from behind them they turned and walked a few steps when dorothy saw something shining in a ray of sunshine she ran to the place and then stopped with a little cry of surprise standing beside a tree was a man made entirely of tin he stood completely motionless as if he could not move at all dorothy looked at him in amazement and so did the scarecrow while toto barked sharply and snapped at the tin legs which hurt his teeth did you groan asked dorothy yes answered the tin man i did i have been groaning for more than a year and no one has ever heard me before or come to help me what can i do for you she asked softly for she felt sorry when the tin man spoke in such a sad voice Get an oil can and oil my joints," he answered. "They are rusted so badly that I cannot move them at all. If I am well oiled, I shall soon be all right again. You will find an oil can on a shelf in my cottage." Dorothy at once ran back to the cottage and found the oil can. And then she returned and oiled the tin man's joints. The scarecrow bent them slowly and carefully until they were free from rust and as good as new. The tin man gave a sigh of relief and leaned against the tree. "This is a great comfort," he said. "Thank you. You have saved my life."